Hi, and welcome to Comedy Recapped. Today we'll be talking about the 1990 American crime comedy film titled Quick Change, directed by Bill Murray and Howard Franklin. It follows three criminals on an elaborate bank robbery as their subsequent escape drags them across New York City through increasingly ridiculous hijinks. Beware, spoilers ahead. We pan over through a group of average looking people in the subway before settling on a face paint clad clown. He's sitting, looking miserable, holding balloons, as the train stops and he makes his way out among the crowd. He's pushed around by commuters who won't let him off until he has to force his way. He comes out into the street slowly, continuing to be ignored by passers-by until he passes an adult entertainment store. The man out front notes him, ensuring he knows that clowns are welcome. Despite this, he keeps walking. He makes his way to the bank, just in time for the security guard to try to close the door in his face. The clown complains he should have a few minutes, but the guard tries to push him away. He stops the door with his oversized shoe and pushes a weapon into the guard's face. He demands he call him Mr. Bozo as a show of respect. He walks into the bank, opens his coat, and shows off the explosives he has strapped to his chest, telling him not to mess with him. These explosives are fake, but no one knows that. Without issue, the security guard hands him his weapon, saying he's an old man and making it clear he has no plan to fight back. Coming out into the main room, the clown announces the robbery. However, nobody in the bank takes him seriously. Again, he announces that there is a robbery, and they continue to disregard him. The security guard is also ignored, so the clown lets go of his balloons and lets them float away, shooting two warning shots into the air to get everyone's attention. This time, they scream and duck away from him. In response, one of the tellers hits the silent alarm button. There are various responses amongst the crowd, as people are instructed to not move. One man begins crying, and he threatens him, while a woman's dog makes some noises and he pushes his weapon into the dog's face. Eventually, he gathers everyone from the main lobby into the vault. Meanwhile, the police outside begin to come, as they clear the roads away from the bank. They don't yet know what they're up against. In the safe, the cloud makes the banker come out with him as he threatens the group of hostages. He locks the bars and tells them any troublemakers will be shot. He and the banker return to the lobby as the clown shoves him out at gunpoint. He makes the banker contact the police. Outside, the police gather as the chief comes in to help defuse the situation. Meanwhile, one of the hostages is crying in the corner while another tries to console him. He's worried that the clown is going to shoot them. The clown has pulled his weapon in the lobby, but only to shoot down the security camera. He fails before trying again and shooting it down with a different weapon. Finally connecting to the police, the clown asks him to call him Chip, keeping his identity secret. The two of them go back and forth as the clown bluffs, saying the building has been booby-trapped with explosives. The police try to make a deal, so the clown lists his demands. A city bus full of gas, a Harley Davidson bike, a monster truck, and two Jet Ranger helicopters. The police chief, negotiating, promises all of that as long as he gives away the hostages. They agree on one demand per hostage, threatening to kill each of the hostages when he doesn't meet the demands. Backed into a corner, the police decide to give him everything he wants, while believing they've got him cornered. In the safe, the hostages are becoming hostile towards each other about who gets to leave first. The banker says he'll go first, but no one seems enthused by it. Meanwhile, the hostage who has been difficult before is puking and crying, and another hostage suggests he leave first. The whole group of them point at the man to be the first to go. The police have begun to gather the items for the clown's demands outside, beginning with a helicopter. The hostage that is freed is escorted away from the building. The banker tries to bribe the clown to get out with an expensive wristwatch in the safe. He pays the man for the watch and moves instead to the blonde woman from before. She insults him, but he flirts with her in exchange. She's irate, yelling at the lot of them for being cowards. They flinch, as it's clear she's upsetting the clown, and they suggest that he let her go next. They bring two more of the demands outside, and two more hostages are released. It's the blonde woman and a man that hadn't existed before. The red-haired man talks about how the clown is an animal, describing unhinged behavior that hadn't happened before. The police take their account at face value, 
and the police attempts to reach back out to the clown, to no avail. The clown calls the police from a payphone, asking for more time. The three hostages, as it turns out, have escaped and are the criminals that orchestrated this whole thing. They're feeling confident, feeling like they finally pulled it off. Their names are Phyllis, the blonde, Loomis, the vomiting hostage, and Grim, the clown. Grim and Phyllis are dating, and it's clear Phyllis has news to tell Grim, but decides to keep it to herself for the time being. He calls the police again, bluffing that he's still in the bank and saying the monster truck was not to his expectations. In the meantime, Loomis mistakenly hits the horn on the car, which sets off red flags with the police. They realize the jig might be up, but try to salvage things and drive to the airport. While going to the Brooklyn Queens Expressway, they realize that the road construction has caused them to get turned around and have to make a quick maneuver to get back there. They try asking some construction workers for directions, but they don't seem very forthcoming or willing to help. The police make their way in at the bank through a crowd that seems to be turning on them. They have no clue where the clown went and are just trying to get into the vault to the hostages. The trio is struggling to make their way across town as they encounter issues. They pass a shirtless man on a bike who decides to ignore them, adding to the confusion. He seems to be jousting on bikes with another man in front of a church. Loomis is spooked by the display, claiming it's bad luck to watch. They quickly turn around and try to circle back. They come across a man on the road who offers to help them and looks at a map. Grimm talks to him in his car while Loomis and Phyllis stay behind in the vehicle. As it turns out, this man is a con man who robs the trio of everything they have except for the bank money, which has been taped under their clothes. He steals their million dollar heist money though from the trunk. He does leave behind the map though, which helps them better understand where they are. Phyllis debates telling Grimm her news but decides against it, and they head over to Phyllis's old apartment to get a change of clothes. Back at the bank, the hostages are all loaded into a bus. The bank informs the police that the bank does not plan on cooperating and will likely be damning them in the press. After changing into new clothes at Phyllis's apartment, they're confronted and nearly gunned down by the paranoid, stressed out tenant. Across the street, a fire has broken out inside an apartment. Firefighters are breaking into the car to get it out of the way of a fire hydrant. The tenant's wife comes in, and Grimm and Phyllis inform them that they're overpaying for the apartment by a couple thousand. Grimm makes him question a lot of his life decisions, and when they turn around, they see the car has been pushed away, only to cause it to roll downhill and then down an embankment. Back at the police station, the police realize that two hostages are missing, the blonde and the whiny guy. They connect the dots, realizing they're connected to the clown. The trio struggles to flag down a taxi, and Grimm reveals several steps of his plan that Phyllis wasn't aware of, like their destination at Martin K. She suddenly has second thoughts about telling Grimm about the baby, or staying with him, worried that he's changed because of the bank robbery. The cab driver they finally flagged down is foreign and hopelessly not fluent in English. They struggle to communicate where they're supposed to go. This causes Loomis, who is hysterical, to jump out of the moving cab so he can grab another. But the momentum causes him to hit a newsstand, which knocks him unconscious for a number of minutes. The driver leaves, thinking he's killed a man. He tries to turn himself into the police, which causes the trio to try to hide, landing them in a mobster den. The three bluff their way through this encounter, pretending to be from another mobster, coming to collect a few thousand dollars payments. They manage to pass themselves off, despite all odds, and escape, only to try and get on a bus to no avail. The anal retentive bus driver will not take anything other than exact change from the trio for which they have no bills smaller than hundreds. Trying to break the hundred, Grimm heads into a convenience store to get change for a hundred. He has to wait in a slow line behind an old woman who has a large order. He becomes increasingly freaked out by the slow pace, as the bus driver is on a tight schedule and refuses to break even a moment. Phyllis and Loomis are on the bus, and they realize the mobsters will catch their deception. As Grimm finally makes his way back to the bus, the mobster spots him, but he's apprehended by police. The bus driver drives off with the trio just in time, leaving the police behind with the mobster. The police chief apprehends him and brings the cab driver in for information. On the bus, Phyllis and Loomis are trying to bring their anxiety down, and Phyllis reveals that she's pregnant to Loomis, explaining that she was trying to keep it from Grimm the whole time until after the job. 
She explains she wasn't planning on telling Grimm because she realizes maybe Grimm isn't the right person for her. She tells a story about how her sister said you can either be crazy about someone or marry them. They finally make it to the airport, and Loomis reveals to Grimm that Phyllis is pregnant. The two fight about it while Loomis continues to complain about the money taped under his clothes. The police, meanwhile, have figured out that they're going to the airport, but they still don't know who they are, so they're expecting to apprehend them after going through the metal detector. Grimm goes to the desk. Grimm goes to the desk because the lobby is full of people, and he wants to figure out the holdup. An irate passenger in line berates Grimm, but he goes ahead of him in line anyways. He's able to get their boarding passes, but he and Phyllis fight again because she isn't convinced he's still the same person after all this crime. Without Phyllis, Loomis and Grimm make it onto the plane, just a bit late. However, Grimm is still upset that Phyllis isn't there with them, which causes some hesitation before they sit down. As they stand around, an irate passenger continues to shout at them. The police chief makes it to the plane, but focuses instead on the irate passenger, who, as it turns out, is a significant crime boss on the run. He tries to fight the police off, and Grimm and Loomis help. In the scuffle, they find Phyllis has also boarded the plane to be with them. The police chief, now focused on the criminal they've discovered, gives Grimm a commendation and leaves the plane, allowing the trio to make their smooth getaway. Only after the plane takes off does the chief realize who he's just let slip away. And that's going to wrap things up for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this recap as much as we did. If you liked the video and want to look into other movies with us, then be sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on. That way you won't miss a single video.